Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. Um, just a, a little um, stage direction. The offering basket is in the back. It's stationary. And our offering is going to Love, Inc., the Food Bank, and Hope Within. Um, welcome to the Community Lenten Service. And I hope that this is as much a blessing to you as it is to us to provide this service. At this time, we will begin with our call to worship, which is Psalm 121. I lift up my eyes to the hills. From where is my help to come? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. He will not let your foot be moved, and he who watches over you will not fall asleep. Behold, he who keeps watch over Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord himself watches over you. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. So that the sun shall not strike you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve you from all evil. It is he who shall keep you safe. The Lord shall watch over your going out and your coming in from this time forth and forevermore. Let us pray. Almighty God, you know that we have no power in ourselves to help ourselves. Keep us both outwardly in our bodies and inwardly in our souls, that we may be defended from all adversities which may happen to the body and from all evil thoughts which may assault and hurt the soul. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Our hymn is found in the blue hymnal. reading from the prophet Jeremiah. The word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord, come, go down to the potter's house, and there I will let you hear my words. So I went down to the potter's house, and there he was working at his wheel. The vessel he was making of clay was spoiled in the potter's hand, and he reworked it into another vessel as seemed good to him. Then the word of the Lord came to me. Can I not do with you, O house of Israel, just as this potter has done, says the Lord? Just like the clay in the potter's hand, so are you in my hand, O house of Israel. At one moment I may declare concerning a nation or a kingdom that I will pluck up and break down and destroy it. But if that nation concerning which I have spoken turns from its evil, 
I will change my mind about the disaster that I intended to bring on it. And at another moment, I may declare concerning a nation or a kingdom that I will build and plant it. But if it does evil in my sight, not listening to my voice, then I will change my mind about the good that I had intended to do to it. Now, therefore, say to the people of Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem, Thus says the Lord, Look, I am a potter shaping evil against you and devising a plan against you. Turn now, all of you, from your evil way and amend your ways and your doings. Here ends the reading. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. This is a poem from Franny Choi from a book called The World Keeps Ending and the World Goes On. Before the apocalypse, there was the apocalypse of boats, boat prisoners, boats cracking under sky iron, boats making corpses bloom like algae on the shore, before the apocalypse, there was the apocalypse, apocalypse of the bombed mosque. There was the apocalypse of the taxi driver warped by flame. There was the apox apocalypse of the leaving and having left of my mother unsticking herself from her mother's grave as the plane barreled down the runway. Before the apocalypse, there was the apocalypse of planes. There was the apocalypse of pipelines legislating their way through sacred water and the apocalypse of the dogs. Before which was the apocalypse, before the, which the apocalypse of the dogs and the hoses, and before which the apocalypse of the dogs and the slave catchers whose faces glowed by lantern light. Before the apocalypse, the apocalypse of bees, the apocalypse of buses, border fence apocalypse, coat hanger apocalypse, apocalypse in the textbook selective silence. There was the apocalypse of the settlement and the soda machine, the apocalypse of the settlement and the jars of scalps. There was the bedlam of the cannery, the radioactive rain, the chairless martyr demanding a name. I was born from an apocalypse and have come to tell you what I know, which is that the apocalypse began when Columbus praised God and lowered his anchor. It began when a continent was drawn into cutlets. It began when Kublai Khan told Marco, begin at the beginning. By the time the apocalypse began, the world had already ended. It ended every day for a century or two. It ended and another ending, ending world spun into its place. It ended and we woke up and ordered Greek coffees, threw the hot liquid through our teeth as everywhere the apocalypse rumbled. The apocalypse remembered our dear beloved apocalypse. It drifted slowly from the trees all around us so loud, we finally stopped hearing it. The world keeps ending and the world goes on. Welcome to the apocalypse. Pull up a chair and make yourself uncomfortable. <laughs> we often feel we're living in apocalyptic times. The world keeps ending and the world goes on. Today's scripture comes from our daily offices in the Episcopal Church. Sometimes people wonder whether Episcopalians actually read the Bible. I can assure you, yes, we do. We read the Bible and we pray with the scriptures in a very methodical process called the daily offices. There are scripture readings appointed for every single day on a two-year cycle. If you go through that, you will have systematically read about 80% of the Bible. So yes, we do read the Bible. And today, we are in the 18th chapter of the prophet Jeremiah. The word of the Lord comes to him and says, go down to the potter's house and he watches the potter work. And the potter throws the clay and begins to, shape, begins to shape this vessel, and it is not pleasing to the potter, and so the potter smushes up the clay and starts over. And the word of the Lord comes to Jeremiah, this is what I will do to the people of Judah. They've gone their own way, and I am going to start over. 
Not a very comforting word. Not something, frankly, that the Judeans wanted to hear. That's the nature of being a prophet. Nobody really wants to listen to you, especially the people who are in power, the people who have the power to make changes. They really don't want to hear you because their ox is going to get gored. And Jeremiah lives this life where he has to proclaim the word of God to a people who really would rather go their own way. The book of Jeremiah is this sometimes confusing jumble of images and poetry and narrative and you, poor Jeremiah, boy, they threw him down a well. I mean, he's, he's had all kinds of things happen to him because the leadership and the powers that be didn't want to hear that God was not pleased with how they had shaped themselves. And what in particular is God upset about? Well, every prophet speaks to the same fundamental issue. It's the fact that the leadership is no longer following Torah. The leadership is no longer following the law of God, which, for the majority of it, stipulates how we're supposed to treat each other. And over and over the prophets, including Jeremiah, speak of how the people are ignoring God's command to look out for the marginalized and the underclass. They are supposed to pay attention to the widows and the orphans and the poor and the suffering and the sick and the immigrants among them. But instead, the leadership has turned to its own way and are now exploiting these marginalized people for their own personal benefit, economic gain, and power. Some things don't seem to change, do they? Not much. Yes, the world keeps ending, and Jeremiah warns the people, the world is going to end. Your world as you know it, you will be taken into exile. God is going to allow this because you have gone your own way. Leadership really still didn't want to hear it, and we know what happened. Sounds strangely contemporary, doesn't it? The world keeps ending, the world goes on. God says you're exploiting the marginalized among you, and I really don't like that because any time we want to ask where is God, God is on the side of anyone who is on the margins. We are living in an apocalyptic time, always living in an apocalyptic time where things are being revealed to us, things that are very hard to look at. Some of them are huge and global, and we can feel absolutely powerless to do anything about them. Pandemic, climate change, war in Ukraine. We see big problems, big issues. And we see violence breaking out. We see oppression and degradation of people and the planet. But then there's also another competing voice. There are the voices of those on the margins who are crying out for liberation, freedom, and release. The voices on the margins who are calling out for justice, just as it happened in Jeremiah's day. And just in Jeremiah's day, God will look at the forms of how we have structured our lives, and like the potter, we'll smush them up if it is not pleasing to God, or allow them to fall apart. But notice what God doesn't say in that vision to Jeremiah. God does not say, I will destroy the clay. The substance will stay. The form may change, but the substance will stay. So when we listen to where God's voice is with the marginalized, we're seeing all kinds of things being revealed on the edges. We pay attention. We are seeing the ugliness of racism, white supremacy, and what it's doing to BIPOC people. We're seeing women's rights and agency taken away by legislation. We are seeing the LGBTQ community told to go back in the closet because some of us are uncomfortable. We're seeing trans people refused affirming, gender affirming care. We're seeing all kinds of calls from the margins for justice and to be treated as 
dignified human beings. And that's where God is. And yet those voices will challenge the forms that we have built, the forms of governance, the forms of access, the forms that we are accustomed to, that are comfortable to us, those voices on the margin challenge those forms. And that's a very difficult thing for many of us to hear and to heed. And so when these cacophonous voices, all of this catastrophe, all these forms crumbling around us happen, I think our question to ourselves is, where is the voice of love? How do we as Christians walk in the voice of love? And love is the voice of God. Where is love? And how does love respond to God's call from the margins? Are we going to uphold forms and structures that continue to harm and marginalize? I don't think God's in that. Are we going to help those who are on the margins crying for justice, to hear the life-giving, liberating voice, even if it means forms that we're accustomed to have to come down? It's an uncomfortable time to live in. It's liminal space. And yet, it's the opportunity for Christians to be that voice of love instead of a voice of oppression and hate. Because it isn't good news unless someone's getting set free. It just isn't good news unless someone gets set free. So yes, the world, as we know it, is ending. And the world will go on. And there will be many more apocalypses. And our response to that is, can we trust? Can we hear the voice of love? And can we trust that those voices from the margins that may feel threatening, that God is there, that God may be just in the middle of this undoing to bring a more just and liberating world for all of us. Because sometimes, sometimes I don't think we trust that very well. I've heard Christians say that these voices of the margins are the voices of Satan. Have you, have you all ever heard that? I have. As if Satan has that much power. Seriously? I tell, I tell you, I think it's easy. Sometimes it's easier, I think, for some folks to believe in Satan than to believe in God. God says, I am going to new, do a new thing to Isaiah. Today, he says it through the image of the potter. I'm going to do a new thing. It's not going to be fun. When forms and structures crumble around us, it is uncomfortable, it is difficult, it can be painful. And yet, perhaps, just perhaps, all of this chaos and mess surrounding us is just the birth pangs of this new thing. So as we round the corner of this Lenten journey and we head with our eyes on Holy Week, remembering that on that Good Friday for the disciples who witnessed their Lord crucified, the world for them ended. And on Easter Sunday, the world kept going on in the resurrection of our Lord. The world keeps ending and the world goes on. May we all respond in love as forms fall apart. May we stand with those who are powerless. And may we proclaim that life-giving, liberating love of our Lord Jesus Christ. The response for our prayer of intercession is, hear our prayer. God of the blessed, we praise you for mercy shown, grace given, living water, spirit's power. We ask you for daily strength, hope for tomorrow, 
your word to guide, strong feet to follow. God of compassion, hear our prayer. God of the oppressed, we bring to you the broken ones, forgotten ones, exploited and abused ones. Bring freedom and release, love and compassion to damaged hearts and souls. God of compassion, hear our prayer. God of the distressed, we bring to you the grieving ones, hurting ones, suffering and wounded ones. Bring wholeness and healing, comfort and relief to broken bodies and minds. God of compassion, hear our prayer. God of the dispossessed, we bring to you the lonely ones, the homeless ones, thirsty, tired and penniless ones. Bring hope and sustenance, physical and spiritual food to hungry bodies and souls. God of compassion, hear our prayer. The Lord is good to all and has compassion on all creation. May the peace, love, and compassion of the Lord be with you now and always. Amen. Before Pastor Christine gives the benediction today, we invite you all downstairs to join us for lunch. There are two ways to get there. If you exit from the back and you can take the elevator down, or if you go around that room that's directly behind the door here, circle around behind the bathrooms, there is a stairway downstairs. We do welcome you to join us. Uh, the luncheon suggested donation is $5 to help cover the cost of the food. But if you don't have $5, don't worry about it. Come on down and eat anyway. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May his face shine upon you and may he bring you peace as we go now from our service and out into the world to carry the gospel message along with us. Amen. <laughs>